Welcome, everybody. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is the August 2nd special board meeting of the Wyburn Unified School District. Tonight's agenda is, uh, or we have a special agenda this evening, both about fiscal matter, matters and two presentations. Um, may I have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? Yeah, motion. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Becca, can you hear us? Aye. There we go. Thank you. Any opposed? All in favor. The uh, let's have the pledge of allegiance. Um, Dr. Ingram, what can you start time? Um, raise the right hand over your heart. I didn't begin. I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic we will now turn to from the public are there any public comments here in person or online I do not, I do not have any. All right. No from the public. We'll then move to from the board. Any comments from the board? Roger, starting with you, sir. I don't have any comments today. Thank you. All right. Nelson? It's glad to be back. Glad to be back. Welcome back. I missed you. I missed the comments today. All right, Joanne. Thank you. Rebecca? Uh, just briefly, I had a chance to attend the uh, Chargers training camp over the weekend at the invitation of the team um, on behalf of the board and uh, just wanted to thank them for the invitation and the opportunity and um, looking forward to working with them and the partnership that they have with the district as they're building their new facilities um, in our backyard. All right, thank you very much. And I have no comments either this evening. We'll move now to fiscal 4.1 and our first special presentation, the 45-day budget revision. I can just tee it up too and say that I'm really excited uh, to be able to bring this to the board today. Uh, so 45-day revision, I think Greg will uh, comment on why we're providing a 45-day revision, but with so much uh, changing in, in this uh, state budget, uh, it, was, it was incumbent upon us to review our originally adopted budget and do a 45-day revision. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Greg. Thank you for the hard work. Thank you, uh, Dr. Silvers, and uh, good afternoon, members of the board. Uh, you've teed it up perfectly. Uh, we have some important information to share. We want to update the budget. As you know, the governor signed the budget on June the 30th. We, of course, adopted our budget before that. Uh, without uh, a number of assumptions that later became reality in the state's budget. So here we are today under the provisions of Education Code Section 42.127 for the 45-day update of the budget. Um, the administration proposes to revise the budget, and I'll go through just a little bit of detail, but you have in your exhibit some summary sheets that uh, will support the numbers uh, at a higher level than uh, uh, what I'll disclose here in a moment. Um, there are things in the budget, the state budget, that are clear to us. We understand how to implement them. We understand how to estimate them. And so we've included them in the budget. There are things that still require some uh, budget, some budget legislation or trailer bill to come out and make some clarifications. Those things we have not included in the budget. And there are a few programs which the district will have to spend a little bit of time to decide if they want to compete in a grant program or if they have uh, high enough thresholds of SED students to qualify for it. So let me just uh, touch on what's included in this budget revision. Uh, there are four items, uh, an additional 6.28% uh, local control uh, funding formula investment or COLA, generally speaking. That of course is in addition to the 6.56 that was factored into the district's budget at adoption. Uh, so that is worth uh, about $1.365 million. It's on the unrestricted side of the ledger. There is a provision uh, in the state budget that now allows us for a three-year average daily attendance loss mitigation calculation. And using that three-year averaging formula, uh, we are going to increase uh, our ADA from what we would otherwise be able to claim in the, year, for the present year. Um, and the value of that is just under a half a million dollars to the tune of about $479,000. And that is also on the unrestricted side. 
<coughs> of the budget. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. The yes. COLA that you talked about, the first item you talked about, yes. is that ongoing funds? Yes, that's built into the base. Built into the base. Built into okay. the base. Yeah. Uh, there is a minor lottery funding increase included here, about $9,500. That was a slight change in rate uh, from the state budget. Uh, easy to quantify, 80% of that's on the unrestricted side, 20% is on the restricted side. And then uh, certainly last but not least included in this revision on the restricted side of the budget is the enhanced uh, expanded learning opportunities plan, which uh, as the board's aware, we had about $481,000 uh, built into the budget looking forward. Uh, that has increased to a total of $1,340,000. Uh, and so that increment of $859,000 has been included in the restricted side of the budget. So you see that pretty clear uh, through the budget documents that we have included here. Um, just as a heads up, uh, and as I mentioned, some more definition is coming, but there are two other larger items that are not included in this revision, but we are talking about and staff is beginning to plan. And that is the new arts and music instructional block grant, which is worth uh, about a million, a million and a half to the district uh, in one-time funds. Those funds go through 2025-26, uh, so there's time to plan, time to use them. They do require a board approved plan, so that will be coming to you uh, in the not too distant future, I'm sure. And then the new learning recovery uh, discretionary block grant, which is a $2.2 million addition uh, to the budget. And those funds run through 27, 28. So again, plenty of time to plan. And uh, again, staff will be working on building the expenses. And at the same time, ideally, we would have expenses that go into the budget with revenues. Uh, but for now, they're out of this budget revision. The state has not yet released a resource code for us to book that against, but know they're there. Know that we can begin planning for them. And uh, that's all good news. Uh, there is an extension of the pre-kindergarten planning and implementation grant that was a one-time grant last year. The district received $136,000. Uh, they've allocated $300 million, which is equal to the amount that uh, was allocated in the past year. So I expect that we'll see uh, a one-time uh, addition on that program uh, of about the same thing that we received last year. So we not plan that into the budget. Uh, we're just still dealing with uh, some definition on uh, what to expect there. There are a couple of other programs, as I mentioned, the Inclusive Early Education Expansion Program. Um, it's part of a, a competitive grant program. Additional uh, AB 602 special education funding will await the SELPA's allocation uh, on that, and we'll include that uh, at first interim. And there's actually a home to school transportation funding bump. Uh, we don't fully understand yet. The district does get an add on in their LCFF for home to school transportation, even though you don't have a program. It's a carryover from the old days when we had revenue limits. So you may see some money on that as we get more definition on it. So in essence, that in summary is the major blocks that came through the state budget, uh, identified some big chunks that we've included in this revision, some that uh, we'll be looking forward to include at first interim and others that are still a bit of a question mark. But in summary, you have restricted income increase of about $859,000, unrestricted income of $1.85 million uh, uh, on the revenue side for a total of $2.7 million dollars in this budget revision. I would remind the board this is all income. We have not yet booked or budgeted any expenses with it, so it's going to make it look a little inflated until we bring those expenses into the equation. And so uh, we look forward to doing that because that's the purpose of these dollars is provide services to kids and, uh, and staff. Yes, sir. Yeah, 2.7 you just mentioned, the 1.8 unrestricted and 8.5, that includes also some of the one time. These are, uh, we have ongoing, the four items I mentioned, the ongoing uh, uh, increase to the base, right. local funding formula. The average daily attendance loss mitigation will work for the district in the out years, but eventually uh, continuing uh, ADA will take over. Uh, so there is some ongoing benefit to that. Uh, lottery, lottery funding increase, that base usually builds, so, but it's not a big ticket item. And then the enhanced uh, expanded learning opportunities plan is, yes, going to be an annual allocation going forward. So that's uh, so exciting. That includes, so includes both. Yes. Okay. Our, our ADA has been hopefully atypically low, uh, hoping that's the pandemic. Historically, hopefully we'll restore where we were moving forward. There's one more provision for ADA enhancement. We have spent a little bit more time looking for there. There are three compliance points to that that relate to independent study. But we want to make sure that uh, the district's compliant before we build that in. It would uh, create another bump. Um, but uh, we don't want to be in a position whereby there's a, we're not compliant with the rules. We want to fully understand the rules before we take any credit. And then the last question for me is, uh, 
you you answer the question. We haven't booked the expenses side. What's the what's the plan on getting those planned for? So just with respect to the four items that are in the budget, uh, let's talk about three: the um, uh, enhanced expanded learning opportunities plan. Uh, you've seen a plan on that. I'm sure that will be revised now that we have more money and it's ongoing. Uh, so there will be some revision to that plan going forward, I would expect. But then the, the bump in the local uh, control funding formula, as well as the attendance loss, are discretionary dollars. Those are available for uh, the board's priorities. So, so to, to clarify, I think that I just want to make sure I hit the big block. So the E log which is uh, what we, we did approve the first round of that at the last board meeting, which was for right at school to provide this year. And it would give us an opportunity to explore whether we need to take, um, basically in short, we don't believe that the funding we're gonna receive is gonna be able to match the, the cost of right at school. So, uh, but we wanted to make sure we provided a service to the students in the, in the interim. And uh, as the year, it's an audited year this year. So the next year we'll actually, be audited and have to provide um, information to um, to support the program. So that's for 23-24, yes, 23-24. So in that year, as we build to that year, we'll take a look at other options or more communication negotiation with right at school to see if we can come to an agreement on continuing that program. So that's the E-log, we know it's a 1.3, ongoing, about 1.3, ongoing. Um, and the, the other big ticket item in here is the 2.2 uh, learning loss mitigation, and uh, we'll work with Eileen, uh, myself, and uh, and team to try and identify uh, the best, best path forward. Remember, that's a about a five-year um, runway for that, 27, 28, I believe is uh, the year that expires. So we're going to want to create a program with that that's, that's sustainable for five years, and obviously not just spend it all up front or spend it after three years. It's like just one time time. money, but the expectation is we have five years to move after this year. We dish at least to get the biggest bang for a buck. And we'll bring a plan to the support. I mean, now that, how do we know the dollars? So, yeah, I think, no, forgive me because I did miss the last two board meetings, so we should probably even see some discussion, but we there was some concerns about our budget in the outer years. Um, does that still hold? Um, obviously, this helps, um, but um, we still had uh, that issue, right, in, in the outer years. There's there's still an issue there. There's no question about it. Uh, you have a lot more leeway with uh, what is essentially a very large windfall from the state. Uh, you know, working forward, we would take this information as we revise the budget. And that'll give you a new forecast in the out years, perhaps as we get closer to first interim. Uh, and that'll give you a lot clearer picture, but it's definitely a better picture than perhaps maybe the last uh, forecast. Greg, right. in terms of uh, COVID relief or COVID mitigation funds, have we seen the last rounds from the either the state or the federal government on that? Or, if there's no, nothing in here. Is that is that, yeah, is that anticipated or is that, that that's the conclusion? We've seen all the money that's going to come. It's already come. The states and the feds know that we still have COVID relief, specific COVID relief dollars left. Uh, so those will run out. Um, obviously, with a little bit of, uh, you know, an uptick in COVID. And nothing coming forward in the state budget for specific COVID relief, but learning loss. I think you're seeing a segue away from specific COVID relief, both at the state and federal level. Okay. And I know it's probably early, uh, but I did read an article just recently, just around the last day or two, where LA used to announce that they're, they're seeing significant losses in AD and EMP. And does it, it doesn't appear like at all they're, 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 those students are coming back. Are, are we, do we have any preliminary numbers yet? Or um, it's still too early? early. Eileen, you're going to do a presentation uh, next board meeting. Was that right on enrollment or that maybe in September, early September, maybe it was? No, we can do um, Do you have a little bit of info? Well, they're still in flux. I'm sorry. Sure. Numbers are still in flux as we head toward the end of August, September, when some parents decide that's when they're going to come and enroll. So our secretaries are back, all schools are open, and we're ready to enroll. Um, we are keeping track of our numbers because of our uh, limited numbers in the lower grades, our class size reductions. We're watching those very closely. Uh, but we feel that we're very strong this year and we have a good opening going forward. We expect to have an, uh, some input, typically in TK and K, in uh, the latter days in August and September. Yeah, I think based on prior conversation, we are at or above where we were last year. We're right? above. Yeah, so we're, we're around, around. It was great. Yeah. 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 And there's a little good theme comes up uh, August. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
And so the numbers that we're aiming for have a particular class size as a goal. Mm -hmm. Certainly the lower grades have restrictions on those numbers, but the higher grades then are numbers that we control. Yeah. And we have goals for that. We absolutely do. Oh. Yes. Any other questions for Greg? Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you very you. much. Yeah. All right, let's go to item 4.2. Uh, consider approval of 40 day by 45 day budget revision for the fiscal year of coming. Motion, please. Yeah, I'm moved to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Roger. And Nelson. Thank you. Thank you for the report. That's good news. Good news. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Moving to our second. Special presentation, presentation two, resolution ordering an election and establishing specifications of the election order. Dr. Silvers, would you like to introduce our guests? Sure. Um, definitely lucky uh, to bring back, I, I believe it's a couple of board meetings ago that we were uh, lucky enough to have Tim Carty, our financial advisor. We had uh, Laura Crotty from the Vermont and, and David Casanova, our bond council uh, present uh, to discuss the, the bond resolution and other elements of, of a potential bond for consideration for this board. So I'd like you to have them back today. Um, I see there's Tim. All right, so we have uh, all, all together. Um, so I was gonna tee it off by by welcoming Tim. I believe he's gonna um, kind of kick this off and then he'll pass it over to Laura and then to David for the, the final uh, piece. So Tim, thank you for being here. Everybody, thank you for being here. Well, I'll turn it over to you. Sure, thank you, Blake, and uh, good evening, members of the board. It's uh, nice to see all of you. I'm Tim Carty from Piper Sandler, the district's financial advisor. So I just thought I would maybe get the ball rolling and then, uh, as Blake described, turn it over to Laura and then to David. But I think really uh, this evening is the culmination of a number of months worth of work to uh, put before the board a uh, a resolution which would place a bond measure on the November ballot. A lot of activities have occurred over the last few months, uh, the completion of the facilities master plan, the public opinion polling, um, a walkthrough by David of uh, what the resolution looks like and contains, um, community outreach uh, shepherded by Laura and the Clifford Moss team. So a lot has happened. Um, again, I think after Laura describes in a little bit more detail um, the community outreach activities that have occurred, David will then take us through the resolution that is put before you this evening as an action item. If you remember at a previous meeting, I think it was probably the last meeting, uh, David walked through it and it was presented to the board for information. What's before you this evening is essentially uh, that same resolution, a $98 million bond with a $30 per $100,000 tax rate or three cents per $100 of assessed valuation. There were a few edits that David made um, in response to comments that were made uh, at the July meeting by some of the board members, but I think what's before you for action this evening is very similar, almost identical to what you have seen before. But um, I think that's the big picture in terms of um, the, uh, the action item that's been placed on the agenda this evening. So maybe with that, I will turn it over next to Laura and the Clifford Moss team to just give a little bit more detailed review of some of the community outreach activities that have taken place over the last few months that dovetailed in with the completion of the facilities master plan and the uh, conduct uh, conduction of the public opinion polling. So Laura, do you wanna take that next? And then at the conclusion of that, we'll ask David to uh, um, review the uh, one more time, the resolution that's uh, presented as an action item this evening. So would you like to pick it up from there, Laura? Yes, 
Thank you, Mr. Carty, and uh, good evening, members of the board, staff, and members of public. So great to see everyone again. Um, congratulations for making it to this point. This is a big decision tonight. Um, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so uh, between uh, the last time that we met, the slide right before this one is fine, but this one we can stay on. Uh, you all approved the facilities master plan, the 2022 update, which outlines in detail your facility needs, uh, what those are architecturally, as well as what those dollar amounts are. And then in terms of public engagement over this past year, in addition to what you've done with stakeholder and committee engagement and a town hall meeting for your facilities master plan, you've had opinion leader and stakeholder conversations, lots of regular e-news updates um, with your 5,000 plus community member emails that you have, as well as constant updates on your website. Uh, you also sent a survey reply mailer to your entire community and recently just sent them a postcard mailer, letting them know and summarizing what you had heard and also sharing with them that you had adopted the final 2022 facilities master plan. Uh, and then of course, some two-way online PSA communication. Next slide. And so uh, just, a refresher, I'm sure you all know uh, well, of course, some of the top uh, vote getters from your community were um, retain and attract quality teachers, upgrade campus safety and security, um, repair urgent basic needs and improve student access to science, technology, engineering, art and math. Next slide. So tonight, uh, this is a board action item for you to vote as to whether or not to place a bond on the November 2022 ballot for voters to then decide. The official state filing deadline is August 12th. If you make a decision uh, tonight, then the final papers, which uh, David can talk to in more detail, would be filed with the Registrar of Voters. Next slide. And just a refresher, this is what uh, Tim Carty had mentioned to you all, uh, some of what you're going to see again in the resolution from David Kaznoka. Not only financials, you'll see the 75 word ballot question, you'll see a project list, and you'll see some of the legal considerations. Next slide. Uh, and so this is literally what you'll see, the, the final <laughs> legal framework uh, that again, I'll let David speak to. I'm about to pass the baton over to him. Next slide. And just a reminder that if you do, uh, as a board vote to place a measure on the ballot tonight, the district cannot uh, spend public resources to advocate for or against uh, a given measure that benefits the district. Um, employees may not advocate on district time. However, they may volunteer on their own time. Okay, I will pass it on to, uh, maybe we just go to the slide before this one um, for David. All right, hello again, everyone. David Kasnoka from Stradling. I don't know if anyone is gonna share the actual resolution or not, um, but Tim was right. We, we didn't make very many changes to the resolution. If you have a hard copy handy, I will hey, we'll bring it up. How about that? Just give us one second here. Okay. And David, this is Neil. One of the key things we'll probably be looking at is what are those changes from last time? Yeah, I'm going to tell you what they are. They were all the ones that were requested by the board. Nice to have you all with us again, bud. So the first edit is in the second whereas clause. If you remember, we wanted to broaden the references to include elementary and middle schools in addition to high school, college, and their career. So we added the words elementary and middle on the first line on the right-hand side of the second whereas clause, okay? Then we added the fifth whereas clause, additional resources are further necessary to enhance student safety. So that is a brand new one that um, 
we've added since the last board meeting. And then there were no other changes to the text of the resolution. The text, text otherwise is exactly the same. Section one, $98 million bond authorization. Section three, the Prop 39 requirements and all the subsequent sections checking various election code and education code boxes to have a uh, properly prepared election order. Exhibit A is a 75 word ballot question. <clears throat> it's exact, next page. It's exact, exactly the same as it was at the last board meeting. No changes at all to the ballot question. $98, three cents. The $6.3 million number validated by Tim it's a legal requirement that we also include the annual levy revenues expected from the imposition of the tax. So that's what voters are voting yes or no on. <clears throat> this is going to be in the literal ballot and in the voter pamphlet. And exhibit B is follows, it's the full ballot text. It restates the 75 word statement and it starts the project list, which is the outer parameters of what's authorized to be funded with the proceeds of the bonds. And in the, in the two little I there, improve student access to instruction, science, technology, engineering, we added the word arts at one of the board members' suggestion. Um, the, the only other changes that were made to the project list appear on page B3. And you'll see these under the third bullet point, clean up hazardous chemicals from school sports fields, adding the words as necessary. And the very last line on this page, removing, removing asbestos and lead paint as necessary. So there was not an implication that <clears throat> your facilities are currently riddled in every corner with asbestos. <laughs> so remember the resolution doesn't prioritize any projects. It doesn't say what you're going to do first. It doesn't say that every single project is going to get done. There's a disclaimer sentence that says, you know, in the event of cost escalation and unanticipated expenses and uh, budget amendments, some projects may be delayed or may not be undertaken. So this is the legal authority box within which you will operate in the future to decide how to spend the bond funds. And because it's a resolution placing a, a measure on the ballot that only requires 55% approval, passage of the resolution requires two thirds vote of the board. So there must be four affirmative votes in order for the resolution to be considered adopted. And as Laura said, after the board has taken this action, a signed copy of this resolution as it's approved by the board, along with the tax rate statement that Tim is preparing, will be delivered to the LA County Registrar of Voters. I'll provide a form of delivery letter. That delivery letter will have a sentence in which the district has the opportunity to uh, request and probably receive a measure letter, like measure W or measure A. So there's a form that I'm going to send to Blake with these materials. <clears throat> but if the board has preferences on what you would like this measure to be labeled, A, B, C, you know, W, whatever you want, LA County allows you to request that. They don't assign letters sequentially like some counties do. So think ahead because you have to make that declaration at the time you deliver the resolution to the Registrar of Voters. David, can I ask a clarifying question? Uh, I 
think Laura, maybe Laura, you would jump in here that we, we had discussed earlier on, it was better to have potentially better to have a letter that was higher up in the alphabet to be higher potentially on the ballot. Uh, my understanding is that's not the case anymore. Is that true? I guess it's uh, by local first. I could answer if you'd like, David, or you can. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, that's true. In LA County, uh, the registrar voters will print for the local ballots, the local measures at the top of the vote by mail ballots and the county and then state measures underneath that. Uh, so the old adage of choosing a letter in the alphabet that was higher up is necessar not necessarily the case anymore. So Blake, you are correct. So I'm happy to answer any questions. I know one board member wasn't present when we walked through the resolution at the last meeting. So if, if that board member needs any additional information, I'm happy to provide it tonight. Thank you. I, I think it's very clear. Um, so uh, thank you though, uh, completely understand it. Any other questions? I uh, just as, Another thing is actually, but um, if we look back at what uh, Laura presented and the survey that we just sent out to the community, we have our survey results and we have uh, item eight under the survey results, which are to provide clean, safe, and uh, clean and safe sports fields. Does the measure itself or the language that we were just reviewing include any language that talks to the sports field? And if so, where is that? Because I didn't see it. Yes, it is in there. I'll let David, it, it's it's in the... Um... <clears throat> Sorry, I think I see it, B4, page B4, right midway through that second paragraph. Is that where I'm reading it? Um... Yes, playgrounds, play areas, play fields, including turf and artificial turf. Yeah, I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it. Oh, that's okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's it's pretty big. It's further down. It's. The line begins programs, assemblies, sports, music, performing arts, playgrounds, play areas, play fields, turf, artificial turf. Okay. And where will this language appear for the community to see it? Or does but that's a good question because uh, let me just summarize for you. When the voter gets the voter pamphlet and they get to your measure, what is it that they're going to see? Correct. They're gonna see exhibit A to the resolution, the 75 word statement. They're gonna see exhibit B, the full ballot text printed exactly as the board approves it. Okay. So this exhibit B to the resolution is going to be printed word for word in the voter pamphlet. Also printed in the voter pamphlet is the tax rate statement. So voters can determine how much they can expect to pay and for how long that's set forth in the tax rate statement. There'll be a county council's impartial ballot analysis of the measure. There'll be a primary argument in support of the measure. And if there's been an argument against the measure submitted in a timely fashion, then there'll be a rebuttal to the arguments against. So at a minimum, there'll be the ballot question, exhibit A, the project list, exhibit B, the tax rate statement, county council's analysis, and the ballot arguments for and against. So the next item after we file the resolution in the tax rate statement is to file the primary argument in favor of the measure. So the deadline for that is a week after August 12th. So I'm assuming that Laura in a slightly modified capacity will assist in the preparation of the ballot argument and work with Blake to identify 
the type of person, ballot arguments can be signed by up to either five registered voters in the district or individuals who sign a ballot argument with a title like Joe Biden, President of the United States. That per Joe Biden could sign the ballot argument not being a registered voter in the district if they're signing in their capacity as President of the United States or head of the California Taxpayer Association. That person could sign a ballot argument notwithstanding the fact that they're not a registered voter. But otherwise, anyone who signs the ballot question has to be a registered voter. And Laura will work with Blake, I'm sure, to identify the types of opinions that are likely to be viewed as more influential in helping voters decide. Because a lot of us, including me, if I'm not familiar with the measure, I look to see who supported it. And if I identify someone who judgment I trust or political views I support, that influences me on how I vote for a measure that I'm not properly informed on. And I think that's part of the strategy that Laura will work with Blake on subsequent to the delivery of the resolution so that uh, those points of view are all found in the voter pamphlet. I wanted to ask uh, thank you so much for this explanation. Ask the board about the fact that we know that the fields um, are such a high priority with the community and they have to dig pretty deep to see that language. Are we okay with that? I think I think what we just heard was in the arguments for and the list. Is there an additional list between a, the beyond A and B that they see? Uh, obviously, any communications that go out on this would uh, I mean, if you if you're if the question and I may not have heard the whole thing is, are we giving enough profile to fields? Remember that on page B3, we had a bullet point clean up hazardous chemicals from school sports fields. Sure that's that third bullet point there. <laughs> that's not my point, actually, but OK. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear what. Uh, OK, my point was just referencing that um in order to align the language with the priorities that we've heard from the public uh, to have language that talks to the sports fields a little more high profile than we have currently in asking the board is the fact that we don't have that language high profile in any of this sort of legal language, if that's a problem. I'll, I'll start the answer. Maybe Laura can give the answer. Okay. Number one, this is a legal document. No one campaigns using the bond project list that's part of the election order resolution because it's too convoluted. It's not easy to quickly read. So there are going to be communication materials, and Laura showed you samples of those that have appeared out in the public domain already, and there'll be an advocacy campaign that will describe the purposes of the measure and the reasons why voters should support it. And if fields, and fields could take a prominent or a less prominent position on those materials, because those are likely to be a lot more simply organized and presented in a way that they're readable in a few, you know, a few seconds or 30 seconds. So, yeah, I get all of that. It's just that when I vote, okay, maybe I'm unusual, but uh, I would read the exhibit A because that's what the language is that I'm being asked to vote on. And there's no language extraneous to exhibit A that actually legally binds the district to do anything. Is that correct? No, I would say that's not correct because the language of exhibit A is, if you can scroll back to uh, exhibit A. So the legal authority, the most beneficial words for you are in the 
the third line, repair, construct, acquire, equip sites and facilities. So when you think about how do you spend bond monies, the first question you ask is, under the California Constitution, is this an expenditure for the construction, repair, furnishing, and equipping of a school facility, yes or no? Second question is, is the expenditure authorized by the 75 word ballot question, yes or no? And so if there is an expenditure that doesn't fall within the corners of exhibit A, it's not an authorized expenditure. And so this is of primary legal importance, the, con the framing of the 75 word ballot question. It's true that the opening two and a half lines, those are projects that the voter opinion survey identified that voters are most interested in. That's not anecdotal evidence. That's not the response of a questionnaire that was posted on your website. The, the first two and a half lines are statistically the highest reasons why someone wants to support this measure. So we led the ballot question with those words. We have a legal requirement that we have to start the ballot question with a capital project. That's why we're starting with upgrading school security, emergency communication systems. That's a capital project. But once you get to that semicolon after the word safe in the third line, then we have our magic language, repair, construct, acquire equipment sites, facilities. That's the core authority. And then the semicolon and all the rest of it is part of the myriad of legal requirements that we have to include in a ballot measure. So you can tell there's, there's only two and a half lines of discretionary words. And those are your best words determined by the pollster, by Laura's firm, uh, and the data that the district had commissioned to be developed. Yeah, and I'll just second everything that David said. And although the survey we did was anecdotal, it also mirrored what we saw from the scientific poll that was done. Uh, and so some of those higher priorities that we saw come back, you know, upgrade campus safety and security, repair urgent basic needs, focus on STEAM access, um, science, engineering, computer, uh, that those are sort of the leading words that you see in this 75 word ballot statement. But that, um, and David, correct me if I'm wrong, but that doesn't exclude you as a board from being able to prioritize projects um, as needed based on the project list and this entire legal document. And the reason for that is, is the words repair, construct, acquire, equipment, sites, and facilities. Everything that's in exhibit B falls within those words. Okay, I think so, I understand better, thanks. Okay. Are you looking for any changes then? To, no, to I understand. It, 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 I understand why the language is as it is. Uh, and I understand that it does provide for uh, meeting the needs as our community has identified them. Uh, I think the language to a community member will be obscure, but I also understand why it's stated this way. And just uh, to clarify, David or Laura, I'm sorry uh, who said this, but I think then then the, the the opportunity then is in the hands of the district on one hand to be able to provide information related to our facilities master plan projects uh, to continue to educate you know the community or provide information to the community as it relates to the need to potentially construct fields, uh, to upgrade school entrances, things like that, as it aligns with our facilities master plan. And then there's a second, uh, David, I think you mentioned this about, uh, you know, a, a campaign advisory uh, committee that would then have, um, I guess, more leeway, essentially, to be able to do, do other things. That's, that's and not today and not tomorrow, but soon I'm going to send you 
materials that summarize the do's and the don'ts, what you can spend money on, what you can't spend money on, how you can use and not use district facilities. Because if you violate the limitations regarding the proper use of public funds in a bond campaign, and someone catches you doing that, you know, maybe there'll be a fair political practice commission fine, but more importantly, there'd be a newspaper article accusing you of misusing public funds. And it's, it's a challenge to recover from an allegation of misusing public funds. And so you'll get written materials from me that will describe where the line in the sand is and where the big footprints are 10 feet behind the line. Yep, and that's right. The the district um, way that you choose to communicate what your you know what you want to prioritize given um, with your school stakeholders, with your parents, etc. As you always do, uh, if they need to know what your plans are for a clean and safe sports fields as it relates to the facilities master plan. Not to belabor this, but just if the project list and exhibit B will be visible to the voter. I mean, they, they will see this, correct? In the materials they receive. It's, it'll be in the in the voter pamphlet with for every voter. Is there any downside to adding to the project list? I mean, the fields are very they're, they're high priority for us, and it's very reasonable for my fellow board member to be making the case where we want to show the community we're going to be doing this. It's very important. Is there any downside to adding that to say item between four and five, I, B, and B under the project list? Is there a downside to that? On page B1? Is that where you're? Yes. Because yeah. yes. it's completely missing. Well, I think they're I mean, it's fine with me to add that, that th these items right here. I don't consider them to be projects. I consider them to be aspirational statements of the board in which the board aligns itself with what the voters said in the voter opinion survey they want most. But if you think that regardless of what the polling results were, if the sports fields are what you wanna align yourself with most, then we can add another bullet point, another uh, line here. Uh, I, I don't think it's what we want. It's the thing to which we want to align ourselves the most, but I think it is something to which we are aligning and it's absent. To me, whether you add it or it just is a political issue. So I just turned to Laura to offer any political advice about consequences associated with prominently rec recognizing the importance. I mean, am I, hold on, I want the rest of the board to make a comment. Am I out in a field here by myself? Speaking in a field? I mean, am I making sense or is this really a, a knit and nobody cares? I mean, somebody else needs to help speak out here besides me. I think, oh, go ahead. I think the sports fields are definitely a priority for the community and, and conversations we've had here here on the board. I mean, I think that's one of the projects uh, that we definitely would like to do. In fact, when we did the facilities master plan, I think that we already ranked that, uh, the sports field pretty high uh, as well. Um, I, I certainly don't have an issue with maybe moving it here, making it a little bit more prominent. I, I do recognize that in the language it is included in that text. Perhaps if we wanted to, in that page before, maybe move sports field up in that area, like to be at the top, at the beginning of that project list. Like David said, these are more aspirational goals versus the project list. Maybe in that project list, that page before, move the sports fields to be like second or third in that list. So when the, the voters are reading that, if they do get to that section, sports fields come up quickly where it's uh, on the project list. Laura, I was just wondering if it would be helpful. I was just flipping through the results of the public opinion survey that was mm -hmm. done. So maybe just a, a, a reminder for the board members. There was a section in which voters were exposed to a wide variety of projects and were asked to rank them 
according to they're either extremely important or very important. And if we could actually go back to the exhibit, uh, the page we were on that was the first page of exhibit B, um, we could go back to that. Number one, I'm sorry, the, yeah, to, uh, scroll down a little bit where we had those aspirational. So number one, 87% extremely or very important was re attracting, retaining and attracting quality teachers. That was number one. The, yeah. the, the last place finisher was building sports fields. Yeah, and, and yeah, and I think just to make it easy, I, I don't know that there's a downside to us putting it um, where David had originally put cleaning up toxic chemicals from sports fields and um, potentially just having it say cleaning up sports fields because I think the issue on June 23rd was that you didn't wanna to say toxic chemicals. Well, right now it says clean up hazardous chemicals from school sports fields as necessary. Oh yeah. So if that's there, I think that, that covers it. I think that the issue is that it goes beyond just cleaning them up. We're trying to construct new ones. And, you know, that's the that whole construction at the 135th and aviation site, for example. And I guess the concern is, does the cleaning up of the facilities equate to the building of new facilities? And if that is something that the that the community is interested in, which I've heard from the talks around the facilities master plan and folks have raised it to me just since the last board meeting, like where's the sports facilities as we were considering the resolution. So I, I agree with Joanne that there, that maybe there's some other way that we can talk about the construction piece or the building and, and just curious about, you know, if you could just reiterate for me what how that is seen in in these so i'll say this about the law the project list you know some of these things are bold some of them have bullet points some of them are in page b4 legally speaking every single project that's described in the project list has equal legal standing with the others and so remove removing hazardous chemicals from sports fields is as the same status in the law as uh, building sports fields as it's authorized on page B4. They're the same. So the challenge is in how much prominence politically do you give to projects that tested last in the voter opinion survey? And that's what the, the information Tim just recited is that in the minds of the most likely voters in November, that is not a priority. And so we try to balance what the preponderance of voters think of as priorities and what the districts identify as their internal priorities, including everything. But uh, there are other ways in which you can communicate to your stakeholders about the importance of fields without prominently communicating that to non-stakeholders, you know, because probably 80% of your voters have no affiliation with the school district. So they don't know about the conversations about the need for fields, but their opinions are expressed in the voter opinion survey and they don't value that type of a project to be taxed. And so, for them, the messages are as organized in exhibit B. For your internal group, you may want to communicate the importance of fields in a different way outside of the boundaries of this document. I think yeah. That's, yeah, that's an important perspective. I appreciate that. And I'll just add that, um, you know, one more piece of anecdotal <clears throat> non scientific evidence is we were very upfront about. Um, just the cleaning uh, up of the sports fields um, in the public communication effort. 
Uh, and so we, we did have sports fields up at the very top of everything we were discussing. And so uh, that was one way that we could try to see how was the community responding to that. Um, mm -hmm. So again, I think, I think politically, I don't see harm in putting it there. Um, I just, I wouldn't put it above, to Tim Cardi's point, I would put it at the top, um, you know, where retain and attract quality teachers are. Certainly not. My thought was not that it would be first, but that, that yeah. it would exist. Yeah, if, if David's okay with that. Yeah, go ahead. Laura, can you remind me how many, um, uh, folks were surveyed or responded to the survey versus what the, you know, universe of likely voters is in the district. I'm just curious if you had that. Yeah, so um, it definitely. So there's about um, five, almost 6,000 uh, voter households. Um, and we received uh, 348 responses to the anecdotal survey. And then the scientific uh, survey that you did with FM3 had uh, 286 interviews. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm inclined to leave it as we are and communicate in other means. Thank you. I do have one question for, for the board is on the aspiration item that we see, uh, particularly item two. Um, in that particular case, I do feel like sports may be missing. We added arts, but I do, do not feel that sports is included in that that uh, language there. Um, I wanted to get everyone's thoughts there. I think that language is because of the STEAM acronym. The Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math is actually this, what the STEAM acronym uh, represents. So I think um, adding sports there would that would be odd. So, um, and I guess I still pose that question because STEAM used to be STEM and did have arts. Right. So uh, I understand the STEAM comment, but the question is, do we feel that? Do you want to be STEAM now? But... <laughs> <laughs> the question is, do we, do we feel that in the aspiration that there should be some, some, some form of, of sports? Uh, in there? Just a question. I think it goes along to the point. Yeah, exactly. It does. And, and I don't know if sports is the right word. I think it has to do with um, the physical side of the child. Physical activity. Physical activity. Uh -huh. I, I, when I look at that, I just don't know. I feel like we've done significant research, uh, had the experts give us their recommendations. I'm inclined to. Take their expertise. Okay. Uh, I, I think I, I appreciate the, the discussion for sure. Uh, and if the board is fine, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hold anything out either for this. So I think, you know. uh, Dr. Bowles, I have the board. I, I'm more and more than happy to continue to. Um, Put out information related to our master plan and you know the importance of, of sports and in the K K eight K twelve organization. So um, you know we continue to to foster that. I think to that point, the master plan is the desired action to be taken. This is the legal requirement to get us there. <clears throat> but the legal requirement is what people will see to vote. Right. And the master plan, as well as we've communicated it is still not what people will see when they vote. So when they get their ballot at home, when they go to the polls, however they decide to vote, we need to make sure that what they see allows them to interpret that as fulfillment of the master plan, if they ever even heard of the master plan. So they, we, we need people, the language that people will use to vote is what we're talking about. Not the master plan. And and that was my concern. Well, I think Joanne, that it'll be, you know, our responsibility, well, the responsibility of the campaign committee working with Laura and whoever else to put out the materials that clarify, you know, that tell the voters exactly what we're saying, you know, in the thing. The I think ballot language is you know, 
always confusing for for voters and that's the job of the committee the campaign to to make sure it's it's clear what uh what is so, intended and to so, have those conversations so like maybe yeah. we can go back to page b1 of the resolution so i want to point out to you we can make a a little tweak but if you see in this open oh, oh stop 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 in this first paragraph we said to that end the board received input from teachers yada yada evaluated facility needs yada yada and updated a facility plan presented to the board on develop so here that's the facility master plan we can change these words to say uppercase f add the word master uppercase p and then you'll be able to say to people you know, we did a, a master facility plan and presented it to the board in the process of developing these projects. So we can strengthen this reference to the facility master plan, but we don't want to say the bond project list is the facility master plan right. because that, that is more likely a narrower document than what's authorized by the ballot question on exhibit B. But if you left it the way it was, this wording recognizes that there is a master, there is a facilities plan that's been undertaken and presented to the board. I think I'm comfortable with that. Joanne's yeah. right. yeah. comment is about what the voters are going to see. But right. that address your concerns. I, I want to respect your concerns. It does. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, as, like I said, and maybe I am, I read things more than a lot of people, I don't know. But what I would read, I read everything that I'm voting on. And so exhibit A is probably what pe most people are gonna read, right? That's what they're actually saying yes or no. And as long as we're comfortable that the language in A, two things. One, that when people read it, they understand what we're talking about. And two, that um, from this language, we can legally um, take on the items of the master plan that have been identified, then I'm good. Well, the legal language lets you do that 100% guarantee. Okay, good. And that's important. And so, um, you know, to be fair, there's going to be so much on this ballot. Just think of all the props that California has on there. So um, we just want people to feel comfortable voting yes for this and that we're representing the needs that the community has identified. Uh, and I think through this discussion, I, I think we have. Any further questions for the team on the screen? All right, uh, Tim, David, Laura, thank you both. Oh, thank you all very much. We'll move now to item 5.2, adopt resolution number 22 23.04, resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Wise Unified School District recording an election and establishing specifications of the election order. Need a motion, please. Uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we need a roll call? Yeah. Okay, let's let's do a roll call vote. Wendy. Uh, Miss um, <clears throat> Canetta? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Ben Willows? Aye. Miss Cappy? Aye. And Dr. Goldman? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 5 0. Uh, we're trying to build a world class, continue to build a world class organization here at Weisburn. Uh, this will enable us to do so, and I encourage your support. Further comments or, or thoughts here? I have a couple comments. Um, I'd, I'd really like to thank all of our kind of community members that participated in this process ever since the uh, facilities master plan. Uh, Blake, correct, correct my dates here, but I think we embarked on the facilities master plan close to two years ago now. And uh, right. since the spring pandemic times as well, and we were able to get through it as well and solicit as much input uh, from everybody, from all of our stakeholders. Uh, I think it's also the first time where we've had a full 
uh, I would say, comprehensive facility master plan for all of our district needs at this moment in time, and, and trying to look forward and anticipate needs as well as, as well as we can, and working together with with staff and, uh, like I said, our community. So I'd like to really thank everybody that participated in it. We totally and absolutely value everyone's comments and input because ultimately they send their children, their kids to the to our schools, and we want to make sure that we're providing the best educational spaces for them because um, uh, good quality uh, facility spaces also improves learning. And I think that's something that we need to keep in mind as we look forward to a facilities master plan, but also our project list. Um, and finally, just thank you to all of our, again, all of our staff that participated in it and our consultants like LPA and uh, the, the, all the, the group that we had on here because uh, on the screen that presented today, because it's not a small feat <laughs> to put something like this together. So I'm really proud of all the work that everyone's done. And um, thank you for that. Thank you, Roger. I would like to ask Laura a question. Of the 6,000, I think, households um, in the district, how many of those households have students? Oh, child. Is she still there? Oh, Laura, here we are again. I have a question. Of the, I think it was a number like 6,000 households. In mm -hmm. Right. Yes, about the household number. How many of those households have students actively attending school? Do we know that? Yes, so it's it's around um, just shy of about 15%. It's, it's usually pretty low compared to the rest of the voters. And um, that's not abnormal um, for a unified uh, school district. So although uh, the voters may not have may not be parents of students that are attending your school district, they see uh, great value in what your school district brings to the community, not only as a keystone, um, but also in the property values that they see. Yes, thank you. And I guess my comment is to um, reach out to both, uh, or to all the households in our community, and to say that we take very seriously the fiscal responsibilities that we have as a board. We uh, obviously are dedicated to providing education and um, uh, the best education, the safest education, the uh, robust total child approach that we've always used in Weisberg, and that this bond requires uh, families to vote yes, families that do have community members that do have children in school at this time, as well as community members that may have had students in the past, will have students in the future, or for some reason may never have had any students in our, in our schools. We look forward to your vote. We look forward to your guest vote for this proposition. It's very important for this ballot measure uh, to keep our standards, to maintain our standards, and to improve our standards. So look forward to the community for any questions they might have um, and any concerns about the ballot measure, why we're doing it, what, what the goals are, and, and look forward to our community supporting uh, this important funding uh, for our district. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, any other issues or items to bring to the board for this evening? At 610, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.